steel is the basis of all modern industry. To make steel, we need coal, limestone and iron ore. Therefore, where coal and iron are plentiful, steel making centers have developed. North America, the greatest producer in the world, possesses large resources of coal and iron. There are smaller steel making centers in South America, South Africa, India, and Australia. And there are larger ones in Japan, Russia, and Europe. In Great Britain, steel is made chiefly on the Clyde, in South Wales, in the North East, and in the Midlands. In the case of Corby in Northamptonshire, for instance, the iron ore comes from local open cast mines, the limestone from Derbyshire, and the coal from Yorkshire. The iron is taken from open cast mines. The miners call this huge grab a muck stripper because it lifts away the unwanted soil. Down below, the bed of iron ore is laid bare. After the ironstone has been blasted to break it up, it is piled into trucks, ready for its journey through the fields to the steelworks. Here are the limestone quarries. Watch the quarrymen at work. They use explosives to break up the limestone. After the charge has broken up the face of the rock, the men return and break it up even more finely before sending it by rail to the steelworks. Coal is also needed to feed the furnaces. From the coal face, it travels on underground railways to the shaft. After being carried to the surface, it is dispatched by rail to the steelworks. This diagram of the steelworks shows the raw materials, coal, iron ore and limestone, together with other supplies arriving at the siding. Coal must be changed into coke before it is ready for steel making. So it is roasted in huge ovens. When it has cooled, this coke will be ready for the blast furnace. Now watch the route taken by the coke, iron ore and limestone to the blast furnace. This furnace makes pig iron. Each load of ore is carefully weighed so as to obtain the right mixture in the furnace. In these skips, the raw materials are carried up the outside of the furnace and tipped in over the rim at the top.
Inside the furnace, the iron ore and limestone melt, making pig iron. At the bottom of the furnace is an outlet which is stuffed with clay. When the pig iron is ready, one of the furnace workers pierces this clay stopper and out gushes the hot pig iron. pours into moulds called pigs, hence the name pig iron. Some of the hot iron runs into ladles in which it goes to the steel furnace. And here we see it on its way, from the blast furnace to the steel furnace. This is an open hearth furnace. Before the pig iron arrives, it is loaded with scrap steel. Now the ladle of molten pig iron arrives and is added to it. This is how the open hearth furnace works. The molten metal lies in a large bath. Air and gas pass through spaces in the heated brickwork and unite to burn with a fierce flame. In this way, the bath full of metal is kept very hot. The unwanted top layer, known as slag, is drawn off. Some more limestone and other materials are added to the furnace. is watched and tested in various ways. Now the hot steel is allowed to pour into a giant ladle. The laboratory has reported that more carbon must be added to this mixture and after that more manganese. The steel is now ready to be made into blocks, known as ingots. It is poured into moulds. When the metal has cooled enough to form a skin, the moulds are lifted off and the train takes these ingots to the rolling mill. This diagram shows the ingots on their way from the steel furnace to the rolling mill. Here the cutter telephones to the cogger about each ingot as it arrives for rolling. The cogger sends it to and fro through the cogging mill, making it whatever size and shape is needed. Watch the indicator. This tells him the thickness of the block of metal as it goes to and fro. This one is long and flat because it is to become steel plate for shipbuilding. Now the does the steel parts on their way from the rolling mill to the finishing mills. Here they are made into girders and many other things which are needed for building and transport. This is a rod mill. Some of these rods will be made into rivets.
This is the riveting shop. Steel parts for road building, bridge building and construction work of all kinds come from these and similar workshops. Now let us run over the chief points. The raw materials from mines and quarries arrive at the siding. After preparation, they are put into the blast furnace to make pig iron. Much of the pig iron goes straight on to the open hearth furnace where it is made into steel. The hot blocks of steel pass on to the rolling mills for shaping and these steel parts then go along to the finishing mills to be made into girders and such things. Work of this kind is carried on in these steel plants which are within easy reach of coal and iron. And here on the world map we can see how the steel works are situated where coal and iron are available to feed the furnaces. 